OK, I'm going to take you through AC 1.2 and this time in this PowerPoint, I'm going to concentrate on the work of the National Probation Service. So without any further ado, let's start. So the National Probation Service, it's part of Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. And that used to be known as, so in some textbooks, you will see it as the National Offender Management Service. But it's now Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service. And that is all part of the Ministry of Justice. So there it is, HMPPS used to be known as that. And it's part of the Ministry of Justice. And one of its roles is to supervise high risk offenders that have been released into the community. Um, and there's about 30,000 of those a year. And the NPS will work to rehabilitate them whilst at the same time protecting the public. But there's far more offenders they deal with each year, not just the high risk. And there's much more that they do, which we'll go into in much more detail as we go through this PowerPoint. So originally the NPS was set up in 2014 and alongside the NPS were 21 community rehabilitation companies known as CRCs. They're private companies so between the NPS and the CRCs they manage low and medium risk offenders um, and as you can see from the maps here you've got seven divisions of the National Probation Service and there are the 21 community rehabilitation companies. So you can see the NPS within the southwest is very big indeed. And actually it's dealt with with two CPSs within that area. Now, there's been a lot of controversy over CRCs and you'll start to see what that controversy is as we move forward. Um, at the time that I'm doing this presentation, 2020, there are plans to get rid of this but COVID-19 has somewhat got in the way of that. So it may well be that um, if you are watching this PowerPoint in 2021, things have changed and you need to be aware of that. So let's look at the funding. Well, the MPS is funded by the taxpayer as part of Her Majesty's Prison Probation Service. The 2018 budget was 4.6 billion. That seems a lot, but you've got to remember that was shared between prisons and the probation service. So all the running of prisons is part of that 4.6 billion budget. At the same time, CRCs were funded via private, um, their private businesses, as I've said, but they are funded via taxpayers money or they're paid by taxpayers money. And the government sets them certain targets which have been agreed in their contracts. Now, these have been the cause of much controversy over the years. So in 2018, 19 out of 21 CRCs missed their targets. And there was a report, a very damning report by the House of Commons that actually stated that 342 million had been sent on CRC, uh, spent on CRCs, and then they said with no clear benefits. So you could argue that those private um, probation services, want a better name, those CRCs, have wasted 342 million of taxpayers' money. And as a result of that, I said there were changes. The government is now planning to end all private contracts for probation and to reorganise into 10 English regions instead of seven, each with an NPS division and one CRC. That is the plan, but as I said at the moment, the COVID-19 pandemic has got in the way of that. So things might change um, in the near future. I dug this out, which gives you some idea of how the funding worked. It's for 2016 and 2017. So you can see the amount of money that was spent on the National Probation Service, how much was spent on CRCs, and then how many offenders were supervised. And what you can see quite clearly here is actually the majority of work with offenders, again, these will be low to medium risk offenders, is done actually by CRCs. And you can see how many offenders were supervised and the cost per offender. So it gives you an idea of just how much this all costs. So straight away, what you can see from that budget of billions, the vast majority of it seems to go on the uh, prison service and CRCs, the probation service, you're looking about what is it, about 800 
820 million out of the 4 billion. So, a little more detail. Approximately a quarter of a million offenders are on probation in this country at any one time. That's the reality. Um, and currently, as of in 2020, they're split 40 60 between the NPS and CRCs. Okay, and as I said, this is due to set change. So, majority of those offenders are supervised by CRCs and not the NPS. So, 40% dealt with by the NPS, but shortly that would change. And the types of offenders they're dealing with are those, or well, two types really, those who are thought safe enough to serve their sentences in the community. So that's anyone who's been given a community sentence by the courts, not a prison sentence, so community service order, that sort of thing. Um, it'll be those sort of people, those sort of offenders that the NPS is dealing with. But at the same time, they also deal with anyone who's out on license. So that's anyone who's um, completing a, a term of license having been released from prison early. And all those offenders will be the responsibility of the NPS. So let's uh, look at those community sentences in more detail. Remember the NPS or the CRCs are responsible for those uh, uh, overseeing and administering those sentences. So the court sets a sentence of them, you know, the maximum of 300 hours of community service. It will be the NPS that oversees that. So that could be anything such as a curfew or an exclusion order. So if anyone's been tagged or they're told they can't go out after, let's say, 10 at night, or they're not allowed to go into a certain area, it is the probation service's responsibility to ensure that the offender is adhering to that order or that curfew. Uh, likewise, uh, the courts can set residency requirements where an offender is required to live in a certain place. Uh, or with certain people and that could be a, pro a probation hospital it might be that they have to live um, with their parents they're not allowed to live with a partner whatever okay um, group programs so that could be a sentence where someone has to attend drug rehabilitation or anger management and again it will be the probation service who will li liaise with the groups that deliver that to ensure that the offender is placed on an appropriate program and of course, I've mentioned this earlier on, the community service work, the unpaid work, any community payback, I think it's a maximum of 300 hours that can be imposed. Um, they, that will be supervised and run by the NPS. Now, when we get to the terms of being released on license from prison, um, license, another word I suppose is probation. The prisoner has not yet served their full prison sentence but as we know, prison is expensive. They're released on license and there are certain terms and conditions that they have to fulfill when they're out on license. Usually any prisoner that served 12 months or more will be released on license halfway through their sentence. That is the usual time of um, coming up for parole, being released on license. And um, the license will normally have requirements attached to it. So what I've done in the next few slides is actually dig out what the expectations are for a prisoner who is released on license and then I've got in further slides some of the requirements that the parole board could apply to a license so you've got an idea of how this works. So in terms of what a prisoner on released on license must do, uh, they've got to be of good behaviour, um, they've got to not commit any uh, offence, they've got to keep in touch with their supervising officer, according to what they've been instructed. So the parole board might say, you know, you've got to meet with them daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. Um, they have to receive visits from the supervising officer and they've got, to, um, they've got to comply with whatever the parole board has said. So the National Probation Service will supervise all of those. In addition to that, um, they may be required to reside permanently at an approved dress by the supervising officer. Um, and actually, if anyone wants to stay one or more nights at a different address, they have to inform the supervising officer. So as you can start to see, the National Probation Service has quite a lot to do here. Um, prisoners, or sorry, not prisoners, offenders, mustn't undertake work unless it's been approved by a supervising officer. So for instance, I know someone who's um, been released on, um, you know, been suspected uh, 
child sex offen uh, offences, you know, there'll be certain jobs they can and can't do or apply for, and the parole officer, uh, the probation service officer, will ensure they meet those requirements. And finally, there's restrictions on travel. So they're not allowed to travel outside uh, the country without prior permission of the National Probation Service. So you can start to see all the various things that the National Probation Service has to do. There's, and there's quite a lot to it. Now we talked also about these additional license conditions that can be set by a parole board. And here are some examples of some of the conditions that are sometimes set for people that have been released from prison on license. And the key thing to remember, if, if at any time any of these conditions, so going back to the previous two slides, or this indeed, any time these conditions are broken, effectively that prisoner should be returned immediately to prison. And that will be part of the National Probation Service's role to inform the police that uh, the, the conditions of the license have been broken and they must come and arrest the uh, offender and return them to prison. So here are some of the um, conditions. I've mentioned these before. Residents at a, spe a specified place, so it might be a, a hostel, might be at a, a, a parent's address, whatever the parole board decide. Uh, there could be a restriction of where they can and can't reside, areas in the country, for instance. Um, they might have restrictions about making or keeping contact with a person. That could be something like uh, an ex-partner or something like that. Um, they may be required to participate in a set programme of activities. That's usually stuff like anger management classes, drug rehabilitation, that sort of stuff. Um, there will be um, restrictions about certain ownerships of, of various items or documents that they can or can't have. There might be um, various information that they have to disclose. So, you know, where they're going at all times, where they were at certain hours of the day. But, you, you know, your privacy is not your own when you're out, in, out on license. There could be curfew arrangements, uh, restrictions on your freedom of movement. All these things will be... Um, could be factors of a license condition and of course they remain the responsibility of the supervising officer okay so therefore it becomes a responsibility of the national probation service okay so to summarize their key responsibilities so as well as all this other stuff what do they also do well one of the key things they will do is once a prisoner has been found guilty quite often the magistrates or the judges may um, delay passing sentence until the probation service have prepared a pre-sentence report um, and that ensures that the courts are able to select the most appropriate sentence for that offender and the pre-sentence report will be prepared by the national probation service um, also, the probation service will manage approved premises for offenders. So if someone's been required to live in a probation hostel, that will be run by the National Probation Service. Um, as well as all the other work they do, um, they will assess offenders in prison, so preparing them for release on license into the community. Um, so even though they'll be out of the community under NPS supervision, obviously you need a lot of preparation for that. Um, prior to release and that will be stuff like making sure they've got somewhere to live making sure that they have a job to go to or if they haven't got a job to go to that they uh, they're signed on for the doll because if you imagine if someone releases on prison you haven't got all that sorted and they have no income whatsoever the reality is they're going to resort to crime they'll break the terms of their license and back into prison they go costing the taxpayer money uh, as well as that, they've got to help all offenders who are serving sentences in the community to meet the requirements ordered by the courts, whatever they may be. So that could be community service orders, uh, curfews, etc., etc. They have to impose those sentences issued by the courts. And they've got to communicate. Uh, this is key. So often people forget about the victims of crime. Um, and they have by law to communicate and prioritise the well-being of any victims of a serial sexual assault or a violent offence if the offender has received a prison sentence of 12 months or more or is detained under the Mental Health, 
patient, uh, trained as a mental health patient. So actually they will work with victims of crime, serious crimes, to help them. So another key priority. So don't just think the National Probation Service are working only with offenders, they're also working with victims of crime as well. So finally, how do they link with other agencies within the criminal justice system? Well, hopefully you'll have picked up how they do this, but let's summarise that in our final slide. So they work with the courts because they're preparing those pre-sentencing statements. They're managing any community sentence that have been imposed. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, they'll work with the police because it's their duty to inform the police of any offenders who've broken the terms of their licence so that the police can then arrest them and return them to prison. Obviously, they're working closely with the prison service, working with offenders to prepare them for release. So work, accommodation, social security, making sure they understand the terms of their licence, etc. Um, they will also work with charities and pressure groups, um, finding suitable support programmes for offenders, and they will also liaise with the CRCs. But remember that actually, if, we get, if you get a question about agencies within the criminal justice system, really you would talk about the courts, the police and the prison service, because these two are not really part of the system, although at a, at a push, you could argue that as they're employed by the Ministry of Justice, you could argue they are sort of with it. But in reality, and as we know from the years to come, CRCs are going to be increasingly less a part of our criminal justice system and the role of the National Probation Service will become a hell of a lot more detailed. I hope you found that informative. Good luck with this section of the course. Goodbye.